So what is producer-consumer problem? The producer-consumer problem is a synchronization scenario where one or more producer trades generate data and put it into a shared buffer while one or more consumer trades retrieve and process the data from the buffer concurrently. So it's kind of a pattern which is used to tease the concept of synchronization. So consider this image here. So let's assume that this thing is some sort of buffer, some sort of container or placeholder where we want to put some data. But the catch here is that producer is the one which is going to put this data here and the consumer is the one which is going to consume the data from here. So what I want to implement now is two threads. One is the producer thread which will be putting data in this particular shared container and the other thread is the consumer thread which will be consuming data from this shared container. And at the time when the container is full, the producer will stop producer and at the time when the consumer is empty, the consumer will stop consuming. So let's go ahead and implement the same. So to implement the producer consumer problem, here is the class that I have created and uh, it's called as producer consumer and uh, there would be a supportive class called as worker. So let's create that as well. Let's call it as worker and the worker will have two requirements. One is to produce the element and put in the shared space. So let's call this as public void produce and the other would be public void consume. Using this the worker can consume from the shared space and this worker will need certain properties. So the first one is sequence. So essentially what we are going to put in the shared space is number. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, something like that. And it will start from 0. So we are calling the same as sequence as 0. The next thing is private final integer. Let's call this as top. So this is the maximum number of elements that can be stored in the shared area, shared container. Let's have another parameter called as bottom. So this is the least amount of elements that can be kept in the shared container. And the next thing is private final list. So this is the container itself. Here we will be placing these numbers that we are generating. So here the producer will be generating the numbers and the consumer will be consuming from. The next is that we need some sort of lock. Let's create the lock as well. Let's call this as lock and initialize this as an object. In order to initialize all these things, we will have to have a constructor. All right, looks fine to me. Now let's go ahead and implement the produce method. So first thing is that we need to synchronize on the lock. And what I want is that produce should be able to keep on producing these numbers infinitely until a certain condition is met. And likewise, and the consumer should keep on consuming infinitely until certain condition is met. So let's start with producer. So let's call this as while true and if container dot size is the maximum one then let's print a message so essentially the container has become full so container full waiting for items to be removed and since we are waiting we will call dot wait and this wait will have to throw an interrupted exception so let's add that and if it's not full then let's print a message so sequence added to the container and let's add this to the container And let's call notify and in order to see the demo we should add some sort of delay so let's add a delay of let's say 500 millisecond so what's happening here exactly well 
this thing for sure is going to run infinitely and that is the reason we are getting certain warnings so may not be the most optimal way to implement this scenario but this is fine for the demo purposes moving on coming to the logic so first thing which is checked is is the container full if the container is full then this message is thrown and the thread goes to a waiting state else and then we start adding to the container what we do is we first print the message and then we add that sequence number to the container and after it is added we increment that number so it's a post increment so that the next number could be added to the container in the sequence now we are calling log.notify so if you remember the notify discussion from a few minutes back what we understood is that notify does not come into existence immediately rather whatever is there in the synchronized block everything will be executed and only after that is executed then notify will come into effect and the other waiting threads will be notified so here what happens is that we call notify and then the call comes here so since we are into while dot true and we check that container size is still not full then we come to the else and then we go about executing this so this happens till the time this size is not full and then log dot wait is encountered and then this thread goes to a waiting state so this is how this thing is implemented and executed now let's go ahead and implement the consume method as well now let's implement the consume method so for the consume as well let's throw the interrupted exception because we will need to add the later point of time all right so let's put all of this inside a synchronized block and like we did for the case of produce we want this to run infinitely as well so we will put this inside a continuous while loop and if container dot size so if the container is empty then we don't need to consume anything so let's print a message container empty waiting for items to be added and then let's go to a waiting state in the else section let's start consuming so what we say is container dot remove first and then removed from the container so basically we are going to remove from the list that is the shared container and print the message and once this is removed then we will call log dot notify and here as well we will have a sleep for let's say 500 milliseconds to show the simulation in somewhat slower manner so that it's easy to read and understand right so let's understand what is happening here we are going to do this infinitely and uh, initially we check if the container is empty if it's empty print a message and go to a waiting state if it's not empty come to the else section and then let's remove the element from container and uh, print it on the console and then we call notify and given the fact that notify is not realized immediately it will keep on executing whatever is there in the synchronized block and uh, since this entire thing is there inside this while loop this will keep on executing till the time we are not meeting a scenario of dot wait so this keeps on happening and finally we encounter a situation wherein it becomes empty the container becomes empty wait the log dot wait and we go to the waiting state and then this particular thread which had gone to the waiting state earlier comes into effect and then it starts adding again so this is how this is going to work now let's implement the main method so of course we will have to move out this worker class outside this particular class so let's keep it outside so in the producer consumer class let's create the main method and uh, in the main method first of all we will create a worker object which will be initialized with 5 and 0 so the shared container could contain up to 5 elements maximum and uh, minimum would be empty so let's create the threads call this as producer create another thread let's call this as 
consumer and inside the producer thread we can say worker dot produce and of course it's going to throw interrupt exception so let's handle it accordingly and here we could call consume let's handle it accordingly and finally let's start these threads so producer dot start consumer dot start so let's run this and see what we are getting so let's run this all right so here is the output so you can see zero added to the container one added two added three added four added so and so forth now let's stop it and analyze so basically first zero is added then one is added and so and so forth four is added and once fourth is added then the container is full and then it's going for a state where it wants the items to be removed and then the consumer part is activated and it's going to remove the items from the container so zero removed one removed and so and so forth and finally the container becomes empty and then it's waiting for the items to be added this process will keep on happening because we had implemented in such a way that uh, it's going to happen for infinite time period and this is one way in which we could implement the producer consumer problem of course there are many other ways as well but this is one way in which we could implement it